morning and welcome to Thursday's writing lesson. I hope I'm looking in the right place this morning because I think I was looking at the, um, the wrong camera yesterday and it might have looked a bit like I was looking off stage all the time. Anyway, welcome to Thursday's writing lesson. The nasty writing for today is still Harry Potter themed, but we're looking at something that I think could really help you when you come to write your story. And that's trying to use synonyms and pronouns in our writing. Uh, synonyms are just words that have a similar meaning to each other and pronouns are those little words like he, she, it, they, him that replace nouns in a sentence. If we look at this sentence it's got a lot of words that repeat over and over again. All around the shops were full of people. People were looking in shop windows and some people were going into the shops to buy things. The shops were so busy and people were making so much noise that it was hard to think straight. So you probably spotted that the word people and the word shops was repeated a lot in that uh, piece of writing. So my challenge to you today is to look at the picture on the nasty writing task sheet. It's of the dining room at Hogwarts School, a bit like the new hall in Chesswood. And I want you to write three to four sentences about walking into that dining room at Hogwarts for the first time. Try to use synonyms and pronouns so that you don't repeat the same words over and over again. So I thought today, rather than actually showing you my sentences, I know this is just a quick nasty writing task, but it might be a nice idea before you start writing to think of words you might repeat a lot and think of some synonyms for them. And that would help you perhaps with your um, Diagon Alley story anyway. So one word, for example, that I might use to describe the dining room in Hogwarts is big. But I could use that once maybe, or twice, but I don't want to keep repeating it. So I thought I'd think of some, I think we had this word in our slow writing yesterday, the immense hush. So, sorry, not yesterday, Tuesday. So um, immense, I thought massive. I bet you're calling out some others at me at the screen. I wish I could hear you. Huge. Did any of you think of that one? Enormous. So it's a good idea to get some of those synonyms written down before you start and then you've already got them there at your fingertips. Another one I might need is um, students because obviously there are lots of students in the dining hall. So some of them I could describe maybe as children. Some of them are a bit older, aren't they? So you might say teenagers for some of them because it's more like high school really isn't it Hogwarts. Um, what else could we say? Wizards because they are, maybe we could say young wizards because they're not fully fully qualified yet. What else could we have? Students, children, young wizards. Did I have any others written down here for you? Um, I think that was the only, oh I had diners written down because they're all eating. And then another one that I thought of was noise because there's bound to be a lot of noise in the dining hall. I think there'd be a lot of noise in Diagon Alley as well. So I thought trying to think of other words for noise. This is a great word. Clamour. I don't know if you've ever heard that before. Clamour describes a noise where there's a lot of bashing and crashing and it's probably quite difficult to hear yourself talk or think. Clamour. I like the word hubbub as well. I don't know if you've heard that one before. Um, hubbub. I wonder if it has two B's in it actually. Sorry. Do you know? <laughs> If you do use that word, you might just need to quickly check it online in a dictionary. I think it has two Bs. So sorry about that. I think I've written it wrong there. Sometimes you see it really pays to have a go and write things two ways and see which one looks correct. Hubbub. Oh, I had another one. I had uproar. I thought that was a really good word to describe the noise that you could probably hear at Hogwarts at dining time. So that's what I reckon you should do. Uh, write down a few words with synonyms and then try to write some sentences describing what it's like to walk into the dining room for the first time. Okay, so today you're actually going to start planning your story about Diagon Alley. Yesterday you collected all this amazing, amazing, powerful, descriptive language, hopefully, to describe the three different um, video clips that you watched, uh, the three different places that you visited. Um, and so in the same way, in your plan, you're going to have three paragraphs. Now remember, you're not Harry Potter, you're you. So use the video clips just to help you with the atmosphere for each scene, but you can choose what happens in each place you go to. You can use some of the action in the video clips to give you ideas, but you could also
also invent some of your own things that happen to you because it's your story. So if we look at this planning template that's on the website today, again, you could either print that off or you could just draw something similar in your book with a pencil and a ruler. Um, remember, actually, we always say in school, you can lay out your plan any way you like. You don't have to follow the exact plan template that I'm using. You could do a mind map or you could just have paragraph one and lists events underneath it. I know a lot of you like doing that in my class. But this is my planning template. So as I said, we're going to have three paragraphs in our story. The first paragraph will be when you arrive at Diagon Alley and you're walking past all the different shops and taking it all in. The second one will be when you go to Gringotts to get your money. And the third one will be visiting Ollivanders, the wand shop, and choosing your very first wand. Or will it choose you, like Harry? So, in this bit of my plan, I'm going to write down what's going to happen in my story. So what happened to me when I visited Diagon Alley. So don't forget, it's really important when we're writing this story that we're always using, oops, wrong thing. We're always using the past tense. So I would do that even in your plan because then you'll remember to use it in your story. Sometimes people write the present tense in their plan and then they get confused when they're writing their story. So I would use the past tense in your plan. And you don't have to have speech in your first paragraph. We're going to work more in speech as we get down here. But if you want to have a little bit of speech here, you could. You could think about what you can hear people saying. You could think about what conversations you might have had as you walked past the different places. So I'm going to imagine that I went to Diagon Alley with Hagrid, the big giant man, to show me around and explain how everything works, a bit like Harry did. So I've taken that idea from the video. But you don't have to do that. You could have visited Diagon Alley with one of your new uh, wizard friends. You could have gone by yourself. It's up to you. I'm going to pretend I went with Hagrid. So first of all, in my paragraph one, I'm going to describe that the wall opened and I saw, I'm going to put DA, Diagon Alley, for the first time. Don't forget, Diagon Alley needs capital letters because it's a place. So the wall opened and I saw Diagon Alley for the first time. I don't need to write down all my descriptive language here, do I? Because I've got that separately on my descriptive language bank. These are really just, this is just me working out what's going to happen in my story. So I entered Diagon Alley with Hagrid and then I saw um, the students and who else did I see? All the witches and the wizards and all the shop um, shopkeepers, shall I call them? Shop owners? I think I'll call them shopkeepers. I saw all of them. And um, the first thing I'm thinking is I didn't know what to buy or what I needed because I'd never been to Hogwarts before. So I'm going to actually have me asking Hagrid so um, I'm going to have, how do I know what I need? And that's what I'm going to ask Hagrid. I could actually have the reporting clause in there. How do I know what I need? I asked Hagrid. Um, I'm going to put wonderingly an adverb at the end because I'm imagining that I'm I walked around Diagon Alley in wonder, just where do I start? How do I know what I need? And then Hagrid, he handily had a list in his pocket. That's what I'm going to imagine. So Hagrid showed me a list of all the things that I needed to buy before I went to Hogwarts. Um, I'm going to then move on to me noticing the owl shop um, and Hagrid explained, um, no hang on a minute let me rub that bit out because that's really speech isn't it so that should go over here. Uh, I'm going to um, describe that I passed the owl shop and noticed 
children choosing pet owls. Um, and then what I'm going to have over here in my speech section is I asked Hagrid, what are the owls for? And then Hagrid explained to me, in my story anyway, that, sorry, just dropped my pen, all wizards need um, an owl to take with them to Hogwarts. That, that's not exactly the same as the real story, but that's what's going to happen in my story. All wizards needed an owl to go to Hogwarts um, because they're very wise and they can help you with their learning because they're, you're learning, sorry, because they're magical, quite like one of those at the moment at school to help me with all the um, technology. So that's what's going to happen next in paragraph one for me. And then I think I would end paragraph one with me noticing the broomstick shop. And um, I think I might uh, go up to the window. I went up to the window to have a closer look and wondered, oh, is that what witches use to fly on? Can wizards fly on those too? Can I have one? So that's what you're doing today. You're planning what happens in paragraph one, what happens in paragraph two, what happens in paragraph three of your story. So you're gonna plan one, two, three. You're gonna plan all of it today. But remember, you're not writing sentences. You're just making notes. You don't have to have speech, but you could include some speech. Don't have too much speech, because otherwise it becomes a bit um, a bit boring for the reader. Make sure your speech is speech that tells the reader something. Okay, I'm going to leave you to get on with that. So have a good day, and I'll see you again tomorrow.